so to make this a bit more entertaining, instead of uh, uh, doing like a whole laundry list of like all the metrics and things like that, we wanted to talk a bit more today about uh, uh, from like real world experiences that we had with our clients and kind of go over some of those and kind of use that to illustrate how to uh, properly monitor Kafka. Um, I think we can skip over the slide. If anyone's not familiar, you can stay for the pictures. Um, so when we talk to people about monitoring Kafka, they always are like overwhelmed to think there's like, oh, there's tons of metrics and everything. Um, I don't know what to do with it. It sounds like very daunting. But in reality, when we talk to our clients um, and we go on site, the reality is this, they almost have no visibility at all. Like, it's like we have no logs, no metrics, nothing, and uh, we have to kind of figure out from the ground up what's, what's going on. Uh, so we're going to talk about three uh, experiences today. One on the broker side, Gwen's going to talk a bit about um, what happens during an upgrade and what to do when things don't go just as right as they should be. And uh, I'm going to be talking next on the client side, how do you actually go about troubleshooting a client app and uh, what the metrics, what metrics to look at there. And, um, and then afterwards, Gwen will go back and talk a bit about the in-between and how to replicate and some like a simple app uh, that kind of encompasses the whole thing. All right, with no further ado, start with Gwen. Yeah, so upgrades in Kafka are usually no big deal. Kafka has rolling upgrades. We have very detailed instructions and documentation. So we normally don't expect people to have tons of issues during an upgrade, except that every once in a while we get something in support that looks more or less like that. And it's, uh, this is a quote for a customer. The specific versions are not, doesn't, don't matter that much. It happens on every two pairs of Kafka versions. You get something along those lines. We upgraded and things look wrong. And you'll think that people would add a bit more details, but no, this is the actual ticket that we get. We upgraded and things don't look okay, now what? So if you ever had any interaction with any kind of support organization, they usually start asking you for a lot of things. So we do the same, we're like, send us these logs, send us that logs. So I'm going to talk you through what do we see when we look at those logs. So you can do kind of the same kind of investigation uh, on your own, a bit, a bit into more depths. So the first thing we usually look at is the server logs around the time of the incident. You won't believe how many times we get a server logs not from around the time of the incident. Server logs from five days ago do not, are not as helpful. Sometimes they are, usually not. And then obviously a lot of people are intimidating from reading uh, stack uh, traces, but you shouldn't be because that's, it, it, it's actually, once you try reading it, it actually has a lot of good hints. For example, uh-oh, our Kafka ran out of memory. Uh, so we already know why is Kafka unhealthy. It just ran out of memory. We still have to find out what caused it to run out of memory. And a lot of times reading a bit more in the stack trace helps a lot. Uh, but in this case, you have to know a bit more about Kafka. So like, we expect everyone to tell us, oh, Java heap, uh, we, have, we ran out of memory. But for us, we also noticed that it happens during a part that was called down convert and it will become important in a second. So we ran out of memory. Next thing we want to look is what's going on in the memory. So this is where, you remember, we asked you for the garbage collection log. I'm not that amazing at reading garbage collection logs. So, we, uh, so I usually use something called gceasy.io. And you basically up upload a garbage collection log and you get a nice report. And you want to look at things like, do I do full garbage collections? How long did they take? What's going on? In this case, the full GCs were no big deal. But look at the length of the GC pauses. Um, 20 milliseconds is no big deal, but the max pause is over three seconds. That's huge. It means that Kafka basically sits around waiting for three seconds. It's also a big deal because uh, Kafka has certain timeouts. For example, the timeout for the connection to Zookeeper is around three seconds, which means that if Kafka paused for any longer than three seconds, Zookeeper will think the broker is completely dead, which is definitely something that would make a cluster look slightly unhealthy. So you kind of have to know a bit about the details of what are the default configurations for Kafka so you'll know that, oh, three seconds is actually a huge deal. So we now we kind of have a guess. Something caused Kafka to start doing more garbage collection. It had bad pauses and it also ran out of memory. So what, what as we want to look at, we want to, look, to start collecting metrics. 
And these are metrics that we like using our own tool, Control Center, but really anything that collects the uh, JMX metrics from Apache Kafka is a very good thing to use. And you'll see tomorrow there will be a presentation by Todd Polino from LinkedIn, and he'll talk about pretty much everything I highlighted. We, we only talked this morning, but everything that I highlighted uh, over here, he will tell you why is it these are the most important things for you to monitor. So I'll just tell you that the most important things to monitor are the under-replicated partitions. That's like if you only monitor one thing in Kafka, this is the thing to monitor. And Todd Polino will tell you why. The network pool usage and request pool usage is basically, in a sense, like CPU utilization for Kafka. It tells you how busy it is. And if it's too busy, you know you're running into trouble. Again, he'll kind of talk and tell you all the details on why, what it indicates and what can cause this to go haywire. And then the last thing is the latency, because this is what your users see. How long does it take Kafka to process something? So you want to keep an eye on all those. But it's not enough to just keep an eye on how they're doing right now. You really need to have good history. Because when, we, when I look at it and say, oh, you know, the request pool usage is at 50%, the next thing I need to know is, has it always been 50% or did it suddenly become 50% based on some incident? So it's super important for us to see the, his the history, to get an idea of a baseline, what is normal for this specific Kafka system. So make sure you always have some history to show. And then the last thing that you really want to get, and that's something that gets even good users sometimes fall into this trap, they don't monitor the latency breakdown. And again, Todd will talk about it in, a de in details, but this is the most helpful piece of information on how to troubleshoot Kafka uh, performance issues. Because what it tells you is it takes the end-to-end -end latency, I sent a request and Kafka responded back after 500 milliseconds, and it tells you that much time was spent waiting for a network thread. That much time was spent writing to the local disk. That much time was spent waiting for other brokers to catch up on replication. And that is how much time it took us to send something over the network. So if you can tell where the problem was, oh, most of the time is spent waiting for a network thread. Fantastic, let's focus on that. Oh, most of the time was spent on the local disk. I guess we have a disk issue. So super important to, for you to know, because otherwise it's just too big.